made you, made you think about a lot of things about religion. And this is, this is not an easy task to do because we're breaking a lot of religious rules. And we got to get it up root because I think the body of Christ is suffering. I think the people as a whole are suffering. People don't want nothing to do with church. They're suffering because of what they saw. Amen? And we're, the, we're supposed to be the light of the world. I, I say it again. We're supposed to be the light of the world. world, of the world rather. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. We give you the glory, give you honor and praise. We thank you, Father God, this word will be sown on good ground and it will bear fruit in the hearts of the people. And I give you glory, give you honor and praise. Right now, Heavenly Father, I ask that you anoint the ears of the hearer to hear what the Spirit of God will have to say. I do, Father, ask you today that each one here will hear this word accurately and they will hear it precisely. And they will not just be hearers of what they hear today, but they will go out and be doers of it. For our lives, Heavenly Father, to do is to get the results, and we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, and all the admiration for that in Jesus' name. Right now, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I have that fresh anointing to minister your word. I thank you, Father God, the anointing is on your word. I thank you, Father God, your word is what is powerful. Your word is what produces results in people's lives. And I give you glory, honor, and praise. And I do, Father, ask you now that I will speak this word accurately, and I will speak it precisely, and I will speak it boldly and with authority. For I lie that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I love thy eyes, Heavenly Father, the joy of the Lord is my strength, and it is the strength of my life. I pray in our Father God, and this message, all of you and none of me, written on the name of Jesus. I thank you that revelation knowledge shall flow freely today, uninterrupted, unhindered, by any satanic or demonic force, right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, your word shall not be turned to you void, but it shall accomplish what you said it would do. Also, Father God, thank you. You the Lord thy God that cannot lie, and you confirm your word with signs follow. And therefore, I declare the signs shall follow. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. I'd like you to turn your Bibles to... Wait a minute. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. I think this one. No, that's not the one I want. I think it's 1 Corinthians. Hold on. Yeah. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. I want to go to that point to review. But I just will give you more review. We're talking about, are you living under the correct covenant? Are you living under the old covenant? Okay, and we, really, we talked about the fact that the old covenant is based on our performance. Amen? The new covenant is based on, G on Jesus' performance. Amen? Now, a covenant is an agreement between two parties, a legal contract, and an irrevocable agreement. The covenant of the law, there's the covenant of the law and the covenant of grace. The law is based on conditions. If you do this, God will do this. If you don't do this, God won't do this. Amen? D. The old covenant was designed to bring out man's sin. So the man could have a mirror to look at what's wrong with him. That's all it's designed to do. Show you what's wrong. It's not going to help your problem. It's just going to show you what's wrong. Amen? Grace was given to take away sin in your life. Amen? The law gives it death. The new covenant life of grace gives you life. Amen. The covenant of law is a conditional covenant. The covenant of grace is an unconditional covenant. Hello? The covenant, the covenant of the law was cut for people, with people. The covenant of grace is cut with Jesus. Amen. The law kills. Grace gives life. The covenant of the law is about man's faithfulness. The covenant of grace is about Jesus' faithfulness and what he's done for you. 
The Lord will shine light on sin. Grace shines the perfection of God's Son in you. Amen? The covenant of giving, let me see, the, the covenant of, of giving is the, uh, the, the, the covenant, the covenant of law was given to increase sin. The covenant of the law was given to increase sin. The covenant of grace was given to make men holy. The law brings guilt, condemnation, the covenant of grace brings about justification in your righteousness. Amen? The law causes a sin consciousness. The covenant of grace causes a righteous consciousness. See, we're supposed to have a righteous consciousness. All you ladies and gentlemen, say, I am the righteous of God. I wake up and say, good morning, Father God. Good morning, Jesus. I think I'm the righteous of God, and I'll be at the right place at the right time that you desire me to be in today, Father. Amen. Amen. The covenant of the law sacrificed animals to cover the, their sin, man's sin. The covenant of grace takes away sin by the blood of Jesus. Now, you decide what covenant you want to operate under. The covenant of the law, covenant of grace. People want to fight you. You want to operate under the covenant of the law? Stay there. Stay cursed. Because that's what's going to happen. It produces death and it produces more sin. You like, stay there. Don't argue with me. Stay there. We ain't, we're not here to have no debates. Amen? Now, what I told you to turn to. Second Corinthians, the third chapter. And then we're going to pick back up where we left off about Deuteronomy. King James says, now let's. Do, 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 1 through 3, we're going to look at again. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do we, be, do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some other epistles of commendation to you, or a letter of the commandments from you? Go to verse 2. Ye are, ye are our epistles written in in our hearts, know and read all men. That's gone. For so much as ye are manifest, declared to be the epistles of Christ. Are you epistles of Christ? Are we epistles of Christ? Yes. Christ ministers by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in table stones, but in fleshly tablets of the heart. Now, Moses, there was two Tablets, okay? God had to give Moses a second set of tablets because he broke the other ones. Amen? As a matter of fact, God told them, since they want to do everything based on performance, don't even come and touch the bottom of this mountain. You'll die. Because it was based on performance. Because this is what they wanted to do. This, is, this was not what God wanted to do. This is what they wanted to do. Amen? And I said before, the law was not given for the born-again Christian. Moses' law was not given for the Christian. It's not, it's not for you. It's not for me. The law is not for you. The Ten Commandments is not for you. Let me tell you, we need to get the Ten Commandments back in the school. Baby, we need to get Jesus in there. That's what we need. Because all the Ten Commandments, people say, well, I think I do all the Ten Commandments. You, you lying or something, you don't even do the Ten and I bet you most people can't even recite the ten. Because I know I can. I used to one time, but I don't, I don't know them all. And you know what? I'm not going to go home and try to learn them either. I'm not interested in them. Because it's not for me. It would pertain to me to be something else. But that's not for me, the Ten Commandments. That's for the lawless. Now, thank God they want to put the, commandment, the Ten Commandments in, on, on buildings and things like that for us. Because the Ten Commandments for the lawless. Sinners are lawless. And they need laws to control them. So if they break it, they pay the price. <laughs> Amen. Now, go to Deuteronomy 28. This is what we left off last week. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to start being bold. And the Lord had a situation. I'm going to start being a little bold with it. When people try to come at you with your character, you need to turn around. And they say something about you. 
they're saying something about you, which is really them. You say, I come against that force of that demon is coming through you right now in the name of Jesus and stop. That, that's what the Lord told me to start doing in situations now. Start, start doing it. Let me tell you something. I did that to somebody one time. You know, they, they, they start shaking. <laughs> See, the world is not afraid to let you know who they are. But Christians, what are they going to think? What do they think about you anyway? Does it really matter? Amen. Deuteronomy 28, I said. Verse uh, 1, one we're going to look at first, and then we're going to go to verse 15 after. Now, people say, nah, I got I, I to gotta follow the Lord. I got to do what's right. For the Christian, doing what's right is not doing the law. You're wrong trying to follow the law. It's that the law was not pertained to black people. It was not for black people. It was not for Chinese. It was not for the Russians. It was not for the Cubans. Cubans. It was for Jewish, Jewish folks. Amen? Well, all of us are spiritual Jews. Baby, let, me, let, me, let me say something about that. You are not, Jews were not spiritual. It was dealt with on a physical level. And all of us are spiritual Jews as a result of Jesus now. We follow the new covenant, not the old one. Because that was a fleshly covenant. Amen. What happened to Deuteronomy 28? Deuteronomy 28. It's not up there. I said verse 1 in the beginning. Thank you all. <laughs> Did y'all hear me say verse 1? I don't know. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on, on high above all nations of the earth. Now, we, had, we, we were blessed with something. We, my wife wanted for a long time that I'd uh, come in our house. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. And that's part of Deuteronomy. Praise the Lord. Thank God. I love that. Because we are blessed going in. But the curse just don't belong. The blessing belongs to us. Y'all heard I said to you? We got the blessing. We don't get the curse. The Bible said we've been redeemed from the curse of the Lord. So it's not a condition for us. It belongs to us. Amen. Now watch. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all of his commandments, or some of his commandments. What does it say? All of his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Now notice this. They were commanded to do this. They were commanded to do all of them. You know what we commanded to do? Is to love one another. And people say, well, yeah, I, I love the Lord thy God with all my heart and all my strength and all my soul. You a lying something. Because that'll take all, all you got, everything. Why did Jesus say that to them? Jesus said that to them to let them realize you can't do this. Amen. Now go to verse 15. I'm going to get over there and cover James eventually, but James once said, if you miss one of them, one part of the law, if you do it all and just miss one, you condemn. Because he said you got to do them all. He didn't say just a few. He said got to do all of them. See, and that's when parents today, they, they tell their kids to go do this. You know, you got to straighten, you got to go do this. And they say, this is just too hard. I can't do this. It's, 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 easy to, it's easy to go molding with the world. I'm going to be wrong anyway, so I might as well go ahead and do the wrong. That's what's going on. Instead of teaching them how to be led by the Holy Spirit, that's what we need to teach them, how to be guided by the Holy Spirit. And why do you come to church to hear the word? You come to hear the word so God can make you better. You can't make yourself better. Amen. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God 
to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee, and they shall what? Overtake thee. Overtake you. Well, I don't know about you. I want to be overtaken with the blessings, not the curses. So, you watching my internet, you decide you want, to, you want to follow the Lord, you go right ahead. And you know what? God's not going to stop you from doing it. You know, people say, wow, you don't understand, Pastor. You know, we're supposed to do the whole Bible. You ain't, you ain't doing the whole Bible? You, you lying stuff? The whole Bible. The whole Bible. If you're going to do the whole Bible, the Bible says, if your eyes offend you, pluck them out. Hello? Your arms, be, cut it off. Remember, remember the little house on the prairie where she was going to cut her, what was it, her leg she was going to cut off? Yeah. Cut it off because it offends thee. Boy, you know something? Now you, were, you, you really a lot. You say you're going to follow the law? If you look at a woman lustfully, out of your eyes, pluck them out. Mm -hmm. Jesus, you say you look, you already committed adultery. See, that's what the law is not for us. No man could ever fulfill it. And we try, and Christians try to fulfill something they can't. And, 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 and what they try to do is to measure your sin. Hello. They want to measure your sin, but now be accountable to theirs. <laughs> you know. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm just doing a little story because I got so much rolling around in me. Just be patient with me today, please. Now, look at Romans, the fifth chapter, Romans 5. Wow. Romans 5.20. We're going to verse 5.20 and 5.21. Moreover, the law entered that offense may abound. But where sin abound, what? Grace did much more, what? Abound. Now, I want to read that verse in the Amplified, verse 20. Watch this very careful. Now, offense means that an attack of sin coming at you. That's what it means. Now, I want to read the Amplified so you get more meaning. But the Lord came to increase and expand the awareness of the trespasses by defining and unmasking sin. That's what it does. But where sin increases, God's remarkable grace, gift of grace, his unmerited favor has surpassed it and increased all the more. See, so, so the Lord makes you sin. The law increases sin. You follow the law, sin, 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 sin. I, this guy's church to me. Well, we, we, the problem with the church, we got to start get back to preaching sin in the church. Jesus, in the, Jesus never preached no sin. You ever hear Jesus preach sin? Even, even a woman that committed the adultery, he didn't even want to talk about her sin. He just said, go and sin no more. And he told, he told them Pharisees, he, he, he'd be without sin, go cast the first stone. They want to stone it because that's what they did in the, they stone you. Hmm. Amen. Verse 21. Romans 5, 21. So that as sin reign or rule in death, so also grace would reign or rule through righteousness, which bring eternal life through Jesus. Now, how is, how is grace going to rule? It's going to rule through your righteousness. It's going to rule because you have a righteous consciousness. That's why every day you need to say, I have a righteous consciousness. That's why it's so important to do those creative powers, but keep saying those words over and over again, so you'll become that. See, 
everybody in this society, you have, whatever you've been saying, that's what you have become. And see, if, if you're not responding to situations with the word, let's check word level low, word level low, word level low. And you're going to have to examine that yourself. If people making you respond the wrong way, Don't, don't, don't sit there and let people input stuff into you. Well, I think everything's going to go down. The economy's going to go down now because of Donald Trump. That's a lie. It ain't going down because of him. See, it's not going down before it costs any president. Really. But see, guess what? Things might happen in the world but don't have to affect you as a Christian. You hear what I said to you? It does not have to affect you as a Christian, as a believer. Somebody start telling you all this stuff. Oh, I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. Oh, in, in my, hey, I'm loaded. Jesus became poor that I might become rich. I'm rich. Now, I might not ex be experiencing it in the physical, but guess what? I'm going to define I am rich. And I'm going to keep saying I am rich. Well, I declare that wealth or riches are in my house. I'm going to keep saying it. And you know, sometimes it takes some time. You got to keep on saying it. I'd rather go around, oh, no, I'm always still going around. I'm broke. Always will be broke. I'm broke as that window over there. Just as broke. <laughs> but that's what people say. Broke, broke, broke. See, and you know what? Guess what they do? They're building their lives on broke. Well, Pastor, you got to say what it is. You say what it is, it's going to stay what it is, and you're going to build on what it is. You're trying to change the facts of what it is. Religion or tradition of the same thing is stupid. It is spiritually stupid. Somebody might not like what I said. Yes, it's spiritually stupid. The devil has put stupid in the church because he's stupid. He, see, he, in, in anybody that creates you, you think you can go attack him. You're stupid. I'm going to be like the most high God. I'm going to try to use words to do it, to try to cast God down. That's when Jesus says, I saw the rascal fall like lightning. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Look at um, Galatians 3.19. Galatians 3.19. Everybody okay? See, most folks go to church for emotions. If there's no emotions, it's not a good church because there's no emotions. I, when I first started out in ministry, I had a lady came to church. She said, oh, I can't stay here. What's the matter? She said, oh, I got to feel my Jesus. I got to feel him. And, you know, hey, I wanted to go see what she was feeling. So I went to the church where she went over. I was bold. I went over to the church where she was. I go in there, and they start singing. We're going to beat the devil running. We gonna beat the devil running. I said, oh goodness. <laughs> Amazing. And she think, now how does one get that way? They've been basically conditioned. That's God. But that's not God. We've been conditioned to say God is based on feelings. Not so. We can't base whether God is operating based on the feeling. I can't base whether the anointing is flowing on me based on how I feel. Now, sometimes I might feel that presence of the anointing, yes, but I don't base how I feel on the anointing. Because I met a message one time somebody said, oh, man, that's the best message I ever heard. I ain't feel nothing. <laughs> and they're like, what? And see, you can't go by your feelings. Your feelings are fickle. Fickle. 
And see, you understand, Satan is in this physical realm, and you're doing something, he'll try to mess with your emotions so you don't feel nothing. Amen. Everybody's Galatians 3, 19. Wherefore then, go to verse 18 a minute. Go back on one, please. This is side of that. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by what? Promise. See? He gave it to Abraham by what? Promise. He, he, God did not give Abraham what he gave him based on no law. He gave it by promise. Now, we have the promise of Abraham. And the Bible said we have a better covenant than Abraham had. Build on better promises. Better promises. Amen? Now, go to verse 19. It makes sense to you. Wherefore, then, serve the law. It was added, he talks to transgression, to the seed to come whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, what was the law? It was given to the transgression to, the, to, the, to what? To the seed should come. Who's the seed? Jesus Christ. Now he came. So what purpose is the law? The Bible even talks about the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. It was a schoolmaster. It was, it, was like, it was like it was kindergarten to get you to high school. Amen? But understand this. Had you not understood kindergarten, you might have not understand everything else because you didn't get what was going on in kindergarten. You can't jump from kindergarten to high school. So the Lord was our schoolmaster to, to bring out that we needed a savior in our lives that we could not do this. As much as we tried, we couldn't do it. Amen. Now, Read, I'm going to read the Amplified in Galatians 3.19. Yeah. Why then? The law, what was its purpose? It was added after the promise to Abraham to reveal to people their guilt because of transgression. That is to make people conscious of a of sinfulness of sin. See, that's what, that's what the laws are, to make you conscious of your sin, that you did something wrong. Now, people, you tell me, oh, yeah, that's the Holy Spirit convicting you. Now, the Holy Spirit don't convict you of sin. The Lord just let you know what's, that you've done something wrong, and the Holy Spirit will help you take care of it. But he's not going to, he's not convicting you. Now, that's what the devil wants you to think. So now you start thinking, well, the Holy Spirit convicted me. I did something bad. You know what the Holy Spirit will tell you to do? You missed it. Get up. Let's keep going on. Let's keep doing this. You're the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. Hello. And you need to turn around and say, Lord, I thank you. You merciful my unrighteousness and my sins you remember no more. Oh, see, that messes the devil up. See, what are you doing? You're getting rid of the sin consciously with the word. You get rid of the sin consciously with the word. You don't say nothing. You think, you start thinking how bad you are. And maybe now, what I believe in God for is not working now because I sin. Not based on your sin. Grace has already provided everything. The Bible said God has already given you all things to richly what? Enjoy. Now, and he's just waiting on me to correspond in faith. See, my correspondent to turn around and say, I don't have, I'm not corresponding to what he's, that he's already provided it. Now, it's in the spiritual world, I don't have it physically. But I'm corresponding to get it to happen in the physical world. That's what I correspond like it's already done. The Bible said God called those things that what? Be not as though they were. He don't call those things that be not as though they are not. That's a lie. He called those things that be not as though they were. They're done. Remember when Jesus healed the leopard? 
And one gave glory to God, he was healed. And he said, were there not ten? And notice this. Jesus told him, go show yourself to the priest. At that time, you didn't go to the priest unless you was healed. So he was corresponding like they were healed. Go show yourself to the priest. He wasn't corresponding like they were sick. He said, I've already provided healing for you. And it says, as they went. As they what? Correspond to what he said. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless his holy name. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 56. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 56. The sting of death is what? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is what? The law. The strength of sin is the law. The strength of sin is the law. The law makes you sin. See? That's what you see. A guy in a situation with a woman, he's where he's not supposed to be, okay? He knows that he feel, he's already feeling guilty about it, but somewhere or another he wound up doing it. And she said, come on here, baby. And he said, and, and turned around, and he said, let's get it on. <laughs> Put a little Marvin Gaye in there, you know, let's get it on. <laughs> He read, and then he goes to do it. He still feels guilty again. Oh, I felt so bad doing it. I'm never going to do it. But he will. Why? Guilt. Yeah, amen. Y'all quiet. Y'all okay? I, I, I'm going to take y'all listening. Amen. Romans 3.20. Romans 3.20. Romans 3.20. Hallelujah. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, shall no flesh be justified or declared righteous in his sake. For by the law is what? The knowledge of sin. That's all the law does. Give you knowledge of sin. That's all it does. It will, not, it will not change your behavior. It will not make you better. The law will not make you better. Your performance, Father's God, is no good. Like I said last week, and then we've been taught, you take one step, God will do the rest. You take two steps, he'll be right there to do the rest. That's a bunch of crap. No, it don't work that way. It doesn't work. It's not based on you doing. It's based on what Jesus has already done, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus has already done everything. Everything has already been provided. Y'all know that, that, that scripture in the Bible says, cleanliness is next to godliness? It's not in the Bible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's that other one Benjamin Franklin said, Barbara? I forgot what it was. They said it was in the Bible. One Ben Franklin said. I think of it. Romans 3.31. Romans 3.31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Now here's what something that goes on. Now you're saying, Pastor, Jesus fulfilled the law. 
The Bible said establish the law. Think about this a minute. What law did Jesus, Jesus establish? The law of faith. That's what he's talking about, the law of faith. I'm not talking about the law is still holy. The law is good. The law is holy, but it's not for the Christian. See, we walk by faith, not by the law. There's a scripture in the, in the Bible that says, if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land. Don't pray that. Don't pray that. That's not for you. That was for the Jewish people. We already walk in healing. We don't pray that. God put, you are the salt of the earth. We determine what goes on in this earth by spending time with God, our prayer time, and praying for others. That's what we do. Amplified, verse 31. Watch this. This is good. Real good. Do we then nullify the law by, th by this faith? making the law of no effect, overthrowing it? Certainly not. On the contrary, we confirm, establish, and uphold the law since it convicts all of sin pointing to the need for salvation. That's what it does. That's what the law is pointing you to the need to, to, to salvation. And salvation is not just getting born again. Salvation is deliverance, prosperity, everything. That's what the law is designed to do. I need a Savior. I need Jesus to help me through this. I need Jesus. I need the Holy Spirit to help me. I need him. That's all God's trying to do is bring you to him. That's all he's trying to do. That's what the Lord is. I want you to come to me, my children. I provided for you. Come to me. Everything is, when you go buy a car, they tell you, okay, you get, whether you're getting a type of radio, whether you're getting a car, this is in the package. This is what you get. So you got the package, you get everything in the package. Am I right or wrong? Okay, if they say you got the package, you don't drive out of the car without the package because the package is in the car already. You can't say, if it's in that car, you can't say, I don't want that package in that car. You might be able to order another car without that package. Amen? But in that car, this package is in that car. That's what comes with that car. Ladies and gentlemen, tell you, sir, your package is in grace. Everything you want has been provided for by grace. God's unmerited favor. Man, you got to use your favor. Sometimes we use, we use our favor for parking spaces. <laughs> you go to these malls sometimes, it's just... <laughs> and you, you want to stay prayed up. People want to cut you up. They want to fight for the parking space. Amen. I want to read the message translation on that. <laughs> You'll like this. My wife always had people say, uh oh, the message. Uh oh. Message. Watch this. By shifting our focus on what we do, what God does. Now notice, by shifting our focus, focus from what we do, but what God does. Don't we cancel out all our careful keepings of the rules and ways God commanded? Not at all. What happened, in fact, it is that by putting that entire way of life in its prosperous place, we confirm the law. So guess what? By, by following grace, the law will be confirmed. Lord, it's, it's, grace will take care of the law. Grace take care of the sin issue. See, I didn't need nobody when I was smoking Marijuana tell me smoking marijuana is wrong. I already knew smoking marijuana is wrong. You know? And like I told you before the other week, that marijuana, that marijuana they got, that skunk stuff. <laughs> Smell like skunk. Other stuff grow from the ground the way it's now they what they call it? Germeric what they call it? Ge ge genetically author, author, whatever it is. Ain't the same thing. Because, see, see, the marijuana we used to smoke, man, hey, brother, how you doing? All right, friendly, man, you know, stuff like that. Now, man, they want to kill you. Want to fight with it. Mood changing. Bipolar. One day, 
One day they nice, another day they mean. Amen. Now, did I read that? Okay, now. Go to... Um, Galatians 2, 16. Galatians 2, 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. You're not justified by the law or declared righteous, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified or declared righteous by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be declared righteous in his sight. So guess what? You're not, if you're going to follow the law, you're not righteous in God's sight. Because you're following the law. And the Bible said we rule in righteousness. How are you going to rule if you're following the law? Hey, how are you going to rule? You, follow, you want to follow the law? I just love my Ten Commandments. Keep them. Keep them, baby. Amen. Now, what was that? Verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So it didn't come by the law. Amen? Glory to God. Now, look at 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Now, now you, you, you might sit there watching, but you have a problem with it. All we're doing, ladies and gentlemen, is reading the Bible. What's hard about it? Reading the Bible. See, that's what's wrong with the Christian. I don't, I, I don't want to sit there and read the Bible. I don't want to come to church and go to school. But you go spend thirty and forty thousand dollars to go get some kind of degree. You go even go get your master's. They got something you call a master's, master's now, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and still you're overqualified. And you do, you you do all that and come to church. You just want you. Want, intellectual, intelligent with your master's degree, you want to sit there and listen to some hooping and hollering. Instead of, instead of getting the word which the knowledge that you got, you need, the problem is a lot of people go to college and they get master's degree and all this degree, but they have no wisdom to use what they got. And wisdom comes from the word. They stupid. spiritually stupid and sometimes they come out naturally stupid too because everything comes from the spirit he ain't nice I'm not here to be nice to you I'm here to shake you up and get you, get you mad enough that you go turn and open the Bible and listen to it long enough you can't listen this one time you got to hear I got to take all that religious layers off of you that have been put on you through your mama. Your mama was sincere, yes. But but sincerely wrong. My mom that told me stuff, she was sincere, but she was sincerely wrong. She had religion. Amen. Now, let this help you. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Are you righteous? So it's not made for you, right? I, I'm giving you what the Bible says. Don't, don't write me no letter. I'm giving you what the Bible says. The law is not made for a righteous man. You would declare it right. If you're right, it's not made for you. Now, maybe you're not righteous. I don't know. I'm not saying. I'm just, I don't know. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and for the disobedient and for the ungodly and for sinners. For the unholy and the profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mother, 
for manslayers. That's what the law is for. So you want to follow the law, you must be in that category maybe. I don't know. I'm not saying you are, but that's what you want to follow. Go down to verse 12. Watch this. And I'm going to wind up closing. We'll get into whatever we got. He said, I thank God Christ Jesus, our Lord, who had enabled me, but he count me faithful, putting me in the ministry, he said. Go to verse 13. Go to verse 13. Who was before a, who was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, an inj injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorant. How did he do it? He did it in unbelief. He did it ignorantly. He did it in unbelief. See, and that's what the Lord is going to produce. It's going to produce nothing but unbelief in your life. We are believers. Not that. We believe what the words say. And I'm going to put this in the message too today. I, I said it last week too. The New Testament do not start in Matthew. It starts in Acts. A New test, a, a, a Testament can't start in could not start to the test or dies. Jesus hadn't died yet. Do you understand that? They need to rip, rip that page out. Really shouldn't be that way. But they thought it was new because of Jesus. It wasn't new. It, it could not become new to Jesus fulfilling. Do you understand that? But think about it a minute. People want to hold, my spiritual father have a book, How He Hate Religion. And it's something to really, hey, and I, let me tell you, I, I got into faith and I followed religion. I followed religion. That's what I did. Didn't know. So yeah, I had to take the word and start rooting root that stuff out that didn't belong there. Walk it by faith. Matter of fact, when we first got into faith, we weren't thinking about no religion. All we was thinking about the promises of God. And then somebody came and said, well, you got to start preaching sin, telling people what they're doing wrong now, because, uh, you know, that just, just the faith is not going to help them. They need, they, need to, they, need to be, they need to be corrected, too. You know, you need to tell them, that should, you need to tell them, that should not be fornicating out there. That should not be going to cozy in. That should not be um, looking at other women. That should not, thou should not, thou shall not. And I, and I, I go listen to funerals. People, they, all about behavior. You got to get right. You got to get right. You got to get right. How do you get right except get saved? You're made righteous when you accept the Jesus, your Lord and Savior. You don't get right by your performers. Hello? You get right by accepting Jesus, your personal Lord. I know. Your Lord and Savior. Amen. Every head bowed, every